Wix Studio, one end-to-end -end web creation platform for your agency to deliver exceptional work with absolute efficiency. The number one long-form writer that helps SEOs outrank competition at the click of a button using real-time research and NLP. Start ranking content today with contentatscale.ai. Hi there. Um, so thank you, Hannah. As Hannah said, we're going to be just running through why, how we migrated Brighton SEO to, to Headless. Um, so I'm from a company called Lemon Hive, and we've been, turns out I've been coming to Brighton for 13 years now. I spoke to Kelvin and he said, I've been coming since the second one, and this is my first time talking. So be gentle with me. Um, but I'll run you through what we found with the migration, what's happened, and how we think it's there for the future. Um, from our point of view, what, we're, what we think is, is Headless is going to form a very big part of the future of web development. It's going to empower SEOs to do more. It's going to produce better PPC campaigns. You end up with faster sites that are easier to manage and just produce better results. Um, quickly into Headless versus Monolith. Monoliths are WordPress or a Shopify or maybe a Sitecore. Everything's contained in one box and you end up with that single box um, operating and pushing things into the front end, operating your content management system. They are good solutions in certain situations, but what you tend to find is when you really push them, they end up showing a bit of weakness. With Headless, what you're doing is decoupling everything. So you end up with a content management system that can be the very, very best at managing content. You can have front ends and you can have multiple front ends, but you can have a web front end that's the very best at being a website and producing great user experience. Um, moving on from there, we go into um, introducing obviously the API, which is the connection between everything. So you end up with a content being dragged out of a content management system with the API and then into what could be multiple front ends. So you've got single source of content coming into the multiple front ends and then you can introduce commerce and other things into there. Um, just to be honest about everything, now Headless, like, although you know, I believe Headless is going to be a big part of the future, it's not going to be right for everything. But where you need things like advanced integrations, you've got ERP, CRM that you need to bring in to a web front end or app front end, and, and that's complex, then that's where it can be very good. When you've got complex web management, and this is particularly key, oh, sorry, particularly key to Brighton, where actually managing this event for Brighton is, is quite complex. You've got a l number of moving parts, and it happens twice a year, and it happens very quickly. So you've got lots of things to do twice a year. So that's that. Um, really, we're finding really good centralised, complex content management. If you go and look through things that Sanity are producing, which is one of the content management systems, really good information on how you manage content in complex um, situations, whether it's multiple front ends, multiple editors, uh, mot multiple geographies where you need to try and bring things together. Um, competitive markets, um, quick front ends, great user experience, and where you need that little extra boost. Um, and then when monoliths are just proving too difficult to work with, you're butting up against the edge of what you can do with WordPress or Sitecore or Shopify. Um, so why did Brighton migrate to Headless? It, they had a relatively old WordPress, monolithic WordPress site. So that, that was coming to the end of, of its useful life. People had layered plugin after plugin on top of it. So it was starting to just become unwieldy to manage. Um, and so it was definitely time for them to move. Um, and then through this, I won't spend long on these. The slides are on our website if you want to go back and look. But they had on-site user experience issues. They had performance issues. Um, and then they had particularly challenges with site management. Um, so again, it was definitely time for them to move. And then when we were speaking with Kelvin and Joe and going through everything, Headless was the obvious solution because of the complexity of what, what they're dealing with and because of what we can produce in the front end. So we've got the schedule on the site now, um, easy to do. We can add extra features like build your own schedule very quickly, very easily. It's not there now, um, but it will be coming in the near future. So again, very easy to implement on top of a, a well-built-out headless architecture. Um, 
And then we've got people like Storyblock helping me with data. So people are generally seeing an improvement in headless. We've got faster switching, and this one's quite important because when you decouple, you can all of a sudden either change out your CMS if you want to, change out your front end, introduce other technology, but it's just quicker and easier to switch things around. Um, and then we're finding major retailers are, are switching. Um, this is North America. We've got Gymshark who appear to be testing headless. So if you see part of Gymshark, no indexed, probably because you're on a, a test for a, a headless site. Um, and then the other thing is the big number. We're seeing major increases in conversions. Um, Rob Kerry did a very good talk in the e-commerce expo. And again, he had a number of little stats that show that when you improve page speed, again, conversion performance improves. So what we built, Brighton, was what we believe to be a, a solution for now, um, but something that they can use to grow for a number of years. And we're talking five, ten. I hope it keeps going because you can keep on switching things in and out. So I hope it keeps going for quite a long time. And what we built it with. So... After three years, if not longer, messing around with headless, um, this is what we think is leading the market at the minute. So sanity from a content management point of view, but you've got Contentful, you've got Prismic, you've got Strappy, um, a number of others out there. And then Next.js from a front end point of view, there is Remix and Hydrogen and other things coming out, as well as Nuxt, but at the minute we're finding Next is the best. So why sanity? It's their, just their approach to data. There's more on their website about how they deal with it, but it gives you a better content editing experience. You can do multiple workspaces for multiple geographies. And from our point of view, being selfish, it's just a better developer experience. We can do so much more with tools like Sanity. Whatever you want to do from an SEO point of view, we can bake it into the back of Sanity within reason. Um, but if you want to replicate what you've got in Yoast and WordPress, again, we can bake it in. Um, but it gives us, us tools to just achieve more. Next, from a front end point of view, superior developer experience, again, being selfish, it just means we can do far more in the front end. From a design point of view, which I haven't included on here, you get the freedom that takes you outside what you can achieve with a monolith. So with WordPress, you've got a design based on what you can achieve with WordPress, or same with um, Shopify. With Headless, you've got the freedom to design and we can build whatever you like. If you look at the Rise at Seven website, they've got, we built that a bit of time ago, but they've got clapping hands going up on the desktop version in the hero section. When they said they, they wanted that, I was like, in WordPress mode, and I was like, that's going to take us a lot of time. It's going to be difficult, it's going to be clunky, and it's going to break your site. But with Headless, our developers rolled it out in about four hours and it was on the site ready for them to review. So... It's just that front-end freedom as well with Next. Um, Vassell, who created Next, again, you can host Next in a number of different places, but they sync together very well um, and just enable you to do all of the new features that are coming out. I'm not going to talk about AI, but this is basically building blocks that enable you to build on top of... Um, on top of a great platform and bring in AI, edge functions or other things that you need. Um, Figma from a design point of view. So design, design well with Figma, you can just push that straight into headless builds very easily. So Figma can design component by component or row by row. And again, that lends itself to building out into sanity and having just better site management internally. So you can bring those components together, build your own pages, build landing pages quickly. It's very quick and easy to operate if you combine the two together. Um, and what headless meant we could do with Brighton. So we could have better content management. Um, Brighton is very much an entity-based event. If you think about it, there's a, a number of people. Those people can be speakers, they can be moderators, they can be mentors, they can be trainers. And then, so we've got speakers, they can then have something applied to them. And then if you think about it for a talks point of view, you can have a speaker doing a talk, talks make up a session, sessions make up a day, and then days make up events. And all of a sudden we're managing entities and not you know, complex front ends where we're bringing things together, which is to a degree some of the things that used to happen. And then this is a 
simplified version of, of how we've sort of mapped things out. But you can see that everything can map together quickly and easily. And as complex as this looks, when Joe's trying to operate the site and trying to work with things in a, you know, in everything happening at once and, and with very little time, it's very easy to, for her to utilise the site that we've built to manage things very, very quickly. Um, and then when you see it brought together into, a, into the front end, you have all of these different entities making front ends, bringing things together. Um, and then we've got efficiency improvements, so little things that we can add in because we've got the flexibility to do it. Brighton used to be a lot of copying and pasting, so there used to be a lot of copying, pasting, copying, pasting, and doing that for each and every event. We've given them a CSV function, so if any one here speaks, you fill in a form, that form builds out a spreadsheet. That spreadsheet can then be put into a CSV and we can then push that into Sanity and create entities. Um, that can then push into Next and create pages. And then we can auto-generate people pages, talk list pages, and all of a sudden site management becomes a lot easier. And this is just one of the things that, that we can do with it. Um, we then move on to front-end freedom, and I've said a little bit about Brighton being slightly last minute. We got asked to roll them out a San Diego version of the site, um, or a San Diego version of the container for them to build upon. Um, on the call, they said, could we do it in a day? And I was a little bit doubtful, and we didn't make a day, but we did make it in two days. Um, so again, and that's not us, that's just having the right container to be able to very quickly manage your site. Um, and then there's flexibility through UI. One of the things I like about the new site is that we've started to bring in all of the extra functions, like the running in the morning, the beach clean, and also what, what to do at breaks. So because we've got that flexibility in the front end UI, we can bring this data in very quickly. And again, it's not rebuilding, a front, not rebuilding the page, we just bring entities in and, and we put things together. Um, multiple front ends, this is not the best example of multiple front ends because normally we're talking about a web front end, an app. Um, hopefully one day we might be able to take over the screens and have the schedules actually auto-generating on the screens. Um, but in this instance, at least we've got, you know, we've got a UK version, a US version, again, very easy to manage from one central source of content. Um, and then moving on from there, it, the site's quicker. And, and I know like we can bring up numbers, their desktops, their, everything else, but hopefully people are feeling, as you browse through it on mobile, you're feeling a difference in, in that interaction with the site. And that's what we get with Headless. We get the ability to have the whole site quicker, the whole site user experience much, much better. So we get better performance, better speed. Um, and then from there, we move on to the thing I touched on earlier. So within the back of Sanity, we can build in customizable SEO features. So um, we've got, uh, there's not, not a lot of advanced things here, but we've got title tags that you can, again, set to either controlling your editors by not allowing them to be over a certain length. You can put a tool tip on if you want to be a bit softer with them and just say, look, you know, this is how we do title tags, or you can leave it open for them to, to do. Um, and then Open Graph was something that, that Kelvin was, was keen on getting included, so we baked that in. There's the ability to auto schema markup as well. So eventually we can take the data that the speakers fill into their form, push it into the front end, and we can auto mark that up with schema. So again, the ability for Brighton to rank for people's names. Um, goes up and again the traffic from that is is increased and then my favorite thing is auto image optimization now what we're talking about here is uploading one image so you upload one image that is then auto optimized across your devices and it's on demand so it's optimized on the fly no longer do we need to resize for mobile and then someone's got it one pixel out and it's failing and it's da, da, da. It optimizes on the fly. We can lazy load images, again, automatic, baked in across the site. You don't need to get, have to go and code on each and every one. 
we can bake it in across the site. And we can also avoid CLS by making sure that the block is available and, and we don't have anything shifting across the page. Um, and then we move on to what Sanity can add to it. And we've got Hotspot Insanity. So just making sure we just making sure you highlight the right area. We're working with a jewellery retailer at the minute. And for them, it's particularly important because you've got a big, long image in desktop. And then as we shrink, shrink that down to mobile, we just need to make sure that the jewellery is front and centre. So we can hotspot the images as well. And with that, we're fixing a lot of, I'm guessing, people's problems with image optimization, multiple devices, um, things like that. And then from an accessibility point of view, we can introduce things like auto-generated out tag. Now, this is customizable. It's not, you know, it's your choice as whether you work in SEO or whatever you work in. You know, you can define these systems. We can put them in there. For Rise at 7, it was self-referencing canonicals that they wanted baked into the system. Fine, baked in. You can have it or you don't have to have it. It's, it's now moving into a more strategic function from an SEO point of view. We can help you do the very best um, for your site. So what did we find across this? Now, the site's there. It's going to be growing over time, and more features are going to be coming through. So hopefully everyone enjoys using it. But the, probably the biggest finding for me is just the internal user experience is so important. And I think it's been forgotten to a degree. We've been struggling against systems rather than working with systems. And in a headless setup, as long as you develop it in the right way, you can really have the best experience for yourselves managing sites and also for your content editors, for the developers. So, and, and certainly with um, Brighton SEO and working with Joe, who predominantly manages the site, it, it's been great and the feedback's been great, just that it's so much easier to work now with the site. Um, page speed and Core Web Vitals are essential, but I'm seeing a lot of people looking for numbers and particularly numbers on their home page. And it's not, I don't think that's what Google's aiming for. I don't think they're aiming for you to all hit 100. I think what they're aiming for is better user experience. So if you can get better user experience across your site, not just check your home page. We've got a product called Site Beacon that's very alpha that will scan your whole site and look for page speed issues. There's Debug Bear downstairs, there's Run Vision, there's um, Calibre app as well, who, who can all scan across your whole site so that you make sure you're, you're looking across the site. Um, and then developer experience matters as well. We launched our very, very, very last WordPress site on Sunday, and that's the last we're building because internally, I, we've fought against WordPress for too long. Now, admittedly, we tend to do enterprise, or we were working with enterprise builds where little requests like, can you apply a, a blue triangle to every single image, or can you do this, or can you do that? And it's always very difficult. And like I mentioned with the clapping hands, again, difficult to do with WordPress because you're working against a system. Whereas with Headless, it's just more fun to develop with. So we've got happier developers. We're, we're working better, and we're producing better results. And we've also got, we're, it's more enjoyable working with designers. We're working on a build with a big Shopify agency. And they were stuck in that Shopify mentality of, oh, we can't do this on Shopify. They're designing, we're building. We can't do this on Shopify. But yet, you know, when it came to Headless, we had to keep saying, no, you can. Like, just design whatever you want, we can build it. So it's that sort of change as well for design. You know, we're not restricting designers anymore. You can design in line with your brand and create great experiences. Um, the technology is moving quickly. So we've got Next 13.4 is a major update. I don't know why they called it 0.4 rather than moving it to 14, but it's coming with all of the features that everyone said Headless didn't have, you know, the preview. You can even, with Next and Sanity together and a few other CMSs, have um, live front-end editing. Um, if you want it. So all of these features are now coming in to Headless, but Next Sanity is coming down from the big guys and now becoming more accessible across the board. Um, but it's moving quickly. Um, it's a good time to start looking at Headless. It might not be right for you, but 
you know, research around sanity, story block, all of the CMS is what they can do next and all of the front ends and how it might potentially impact you moving forward. Um, luckily, we twisted Kelvin's arm to, to give us a lovely quote about how nice the site is. Um, we are exhibiting, thank you very much, and I have actually made it on time. Yeah. And I'll leave you with Kelvin. <laughs>